As a result of that appeal, the state was compelled to explain, under oath and in some detail, why all the records were being withheld. Now, the majority of their explanations were not made in open court, but rather were made in what is called an in-camera review, which is a private hearing held before a judge in private chambers. Unlike an open court, the public is excluded from this proceeding, and in this case, the justification for providing testimony in camera as opposed to on the public record was for the purpose of protecting the integrity of the investigation and protecting any potential witnesses from public exposure. There were six volumes of material that the police had collected, 2,938 pages of documents, 254 contacts with various sources and follow-up contacts, mostly short interviews and telephone interviews, 106 witness interviews, 19 written statements, three transcribed interviews, and four polygraph exams. And the documents specifically were divided into 20 categories. It's my understanding that the state has not even conceded that this is a criminal investigation. Shouldn't that be the least the state should do as, as a premise underlying the problem? Because of the facts of this case, um, we don't have a body. We don't, can't say for sure if, if Maura Murray is alive somewhere. Um, we can't rule out that she may have left of her own volition. So we cannot, for, with 100% certainty, say that a crime has been committed. How does it interfere with a law enforcement proceeding? How it's, does the disclosure interfere with a law enforcement proceeding? What other reasoning could they have for withholding dispatch logs? I mean, they specifically say police's response to the scene. If I didn't know anything about this case, what I would think is, oh, well, that night the police were talking to people and searching places that were part of what became the investigation. You know, that would seem plausible if you didn't know anything. But knowing that they didn't have any leads at that point, or it seems like they didn't, then I don't know what that's referring to. It gets a little bit more specific, and it says to the extent that there are records of the reports of the Murray vehicle accident and law enforcement response to the scene. These records would pinpoint the focus of the investigation or provide valuable information that could be used by a suspect to avoid detection, thereby damaging the investigation for the reasons stated in the affidavits of Landry and right. Strauss. Yeah. So, I mean, that states very clearly the reason they're withholding them is because they'll pinpoint the investigation and provide information to a suspect. Right, there's content. Which again is crazy to me because it's like, who were you yeah. talking to that night or, or that you were searching some specific area could be used by a perpetrator to avoid detection? I'm like, how does that square with the fact that that you didn't actually do any kind of search <laughs> for 48 hours after this? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't square. I mean, I think it seems possible that it would support the idea that there was perhaps interaction before she, that accident that she may have had with police. Mm. Or that someone who was not known to be at the scene by the general public, who later became right. the subject of an investigation, actually is in one of those logs. It is a puzzle. Kelly and about a dozen other private investigators are now volunteering their time to help solve this puzzle, looking for any clues. There is a considerable amount of traffic up and down this road. For a person to leave a, an accident and walk down, uh, down the street and nobody seeing that person is just pretty hard yeah, to imagine that. Kelly, who usually works murder cases, hopes this visit on the two-year anniversary of Moore's disappearance sheds new light on what happened here. I, I don't know. And if you don't know, then you want to find out. And uh, going back to the beginning usually helps to lead you to where you want to go. You indicated in responding to Attorney Irvin that you could give him a percentage that you have in your mind of likelihood. What is the percentage regarding whether the likelihood of this results in a criminal case? Oh, whoa. And he says that's where he says 75%. That's crazy. 
Yeah, I wanted to get your take on that, Mary, because that seems like I would have thought he would have been resistant to give that number. I mean, that's such an interesting choice to give that number. Um, I don't know why they said it. Maybe it's true. Um, I mean, he's under oath. Sure. I, I just think it's it's um, it's interesting that they would say that. Why do you say that's interesting? I think it's interesting you chose to describe it as interesting. <laughs> that's because beyond them having a lead on a suspect or suspects, they also have to, you know, something results in a criminal case when there's been an indictment. And that means that they have to present evidence before a grand jury. And that means that there are things to present to that grand jury. I mean, the interesting thing is this was filed, I would say fairly close to the time of Mara's disappearance and Yeah, so I it was within that, two years, right? 2006? Yeah, yeah. If this was an ongoing request by the family, the state's basis for not revealing this information holds less water as time goes on. Certainly. They have told the court, and I'm referring to some of the affidavits of the different parties in many times in the supplement to the memorandum of law, that they would, you know, they would have in-camera reviews so the court could see some of their, some of what they're talking about and how sensitive it is. An in-camera review, meaning that they would show the judge their investigation and the judge could make a determination about whether or not this actually was so sensitive. And I believe they were forced to do that on the appeal. Yeah, I, and I, th I think that if, that if that's a continuing in insistence, or, which is exhausting, right, for a family to do, or for anybody to yeah. do, yeah. and it's expensive, but, you know, that continued pressure is how people make legal progress. The mm -hmm. state can't keep asserting the same thing over and over again and getting the same result. 